Eddie Chavez. Ruben Nava. And Jesse Romero. Jesus 911. Reporting for duty, sir. <laughs> What's going on this morning, Jess? Good morning. Absolutely. Reporting for Jesus duty. Hey, this is uh, Jesus 911. Uh, two man car. Our call letters are John 316. Case you're wondering, we're on Soul Patrol. And uh, it's uh, Eddie, it's a pleasure to do the show with you and do the show with Ruben. Three, uh, three retired cops, LA cops that love the Lord Jesus Christ and that really have just a a desire to save souls. And this is a lot of straight talk. You know, there's a lot of a Sergeant Joe Friday type language. Just the facts. Just the facts. That's right. Got a great show today. Here's what we want to talk about. What would, how would you feel? I'm going to pose this as a question. How would you feel, Mr. and Mrs. Catholic mom and dad, lover of Jesus Christ, devotee to Mary, if you found out that your children, your children, in the nearest public school, were being taught to play the Ouija board by their kindergarten public school teacher. How would you feel about that? Kindergarten. I don't know about you, Eddie, but I'd probably blow a fuse. Well, I know you'd blow a fuse. I already know you. Oh, th- Jess, you know what? Th- there's no doubt about it. We're, and we're going to talk. We're going to discuss this, and we're going to talk about some other interesting topics. But, but this is a huge one for me because, uh, you know, we we understand as Catholics what. What the Ouija board does, what its its, its purpose is, and, and we have to uh, we have to reject it at all costs. So we're going to get into that here in a minute. Absolutely. Well, here's what happened. Let me give an overview, then we'll talk about specifically about this. What is this Ouija board? Over in Milwaukee, uh, there is an obviously an outraged Catholic mom. I think she's a Catholic mom or a Protestant. I'm not sure. Obviously, a believer in Christ, but her 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 her, her uh, child goes to the Milwaukee public school. Uh, the child's in kindergarten, and the school teacher, I mean, the kids are about five years old. It's called Zablocki Elementary School. Well, the kindergarten teacher introduced the students in her classroom to the Ouija board. And th- the teacher actually went, to, I mean, talk about going a- way above and beyond what she even should be doing. <laughs> I thought school was for reading, writing, and arithmetic. But this school teacher turned off the lights. Uh, so she made the classroom dark and she began talking to spirits. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not something I want my kids to be doing at school with a public school teacher. No. And uh, no, no. so she began to channel spirits. And uh, and she said the reason that she here's when she got caught doing this, she goes, well, you know, it's that the kids have been asking for scary stories. And and so and so I got the board and moved the paper clip to answer some of their questions that they asked about these scary movies characters. And uh, I did not say that there were spirits. It was all done in fun. And she said, yeah, well, I, un- I understand your, your concern as parents. But the bottom line, Eddie, this this teacher, she introduced the Ouija board to these five-year-olds. And, of course, all these parents, especially this one parent that the article's written about, they're saying nobody should be exposed to the Ouija board, especially at a public school, especially by a teacher And now this mom is saying that her five-year-old is having nightmares. The kid does not want to go to bed at night. The kid is afraid of the dark. And uh, this school teacher has been placed in administrative leave pending uh, an internal investigation. Hope she gets fired, and I hope these parents sue her personally. Just, you know, this is like a, a, a big uh, timeout for the teacher, right? So she's in timeout, and I hope she does get fired. But this is what she said when she first was uh, confronted with this, Jess. She said that the Ouija board had been in the classroom since Halloween. So what exactly has been going on between Halloween and now? How many of these uh, Ouija board sessions have they done, have they have they begun uh, with these kindergartners that uh, they're not talking about? Now, on one hand, Jess, I think that uh, the teacher... She may not be unlike scores of young people everywhere in, in today's society that just doesn't realize uh, spiritual things in their essence. 
But this is reminiscent, Jess, of a story we reported on some days ago where there was a teacher that wiped off the ashes from the child's head uh, in a classroom. I think it was a young uh, a young class, too. I think I remember seeing the little boy being interviewed on the news, and he was probably about nine years old or something. So it has to be around that age. And, uh, you know, it's difficult to say if these things are legitimate mistakes. I can't see how they could be, but just to keep an open mind, we could say that, that they may be. But just the reality is, uh, you know, if it's not a legitimate mistake, it, it's a diabolical plan to destroy the faith in our young children. That's what I'm afraid of. Yep. And and then he, th- this kid is also suffering repercussions. The kid's having nightmares. Yeah. And there is not one exorcist in the Catholic Church, not, uh, and I've read dozens. Every single one says that uh, that the Ouija board opens the door to possession by evil spirits. Every single one, 100% of the ones that I've read, and lest we forget about the very famous case that uh, happened in uh, in the 1973 movie The Exorcist, which was actually based on a true story that happened in 1949 in Mount Rainier, Maryland, to a a young man named Robbie Mannheim, uh, who's still alive right now, uh, by the way. And, uh, you know, the movie The Exorcist was made about his possession. He was possessed by having his aunt was the witch came to move with, in with them him and uh, she came to move in with his mom and his dad and himself and behind his his parents back the aunt was going into his room and teaching her 13 year old nephew how to use the Ouija board she ended up dying they found out she was a spiritist a speed, uh, you know and uh, she ended up dying and the kid admits Robbie Mannheim that he kept paying you know, like a lot of kids lock themselves up in the room and, and, and play with their laptop or or, uh, or their, their iPad. Cell phone, yeah. yeah, he says that he spent hours playing the Ouija board in his room and he ultimately got possessed, fully possessed. And that's the whole movie that we have today. It's called The Exorcist. Some people are probably wondering, what is the Ouija board? Okay, The Ouija board today, unfortunately, it's uh, it's manufactured by Parker Brothers. This goes to show you how the devil has completely entered into the realm of, of, of our world and he controls you know, large parts of the world. As the catechism says in paragraph 407, he dominates large parts of the world. Well, he dominates, obviously, Parker Brothers in that regard. The Ouija board is made by Parker Brothers. It's a planchette. It's, it's, it's a board game. And, and people that play with it, they use their fingertips a, a, on a slider. And they ask the slide, they ask the, this board questions, and the slider will on its own start moving and pointing to various letters and numbers on this planchette on this board to get a, to get an answer. And so uh, this this is what we would call as Catholics part of the occult, or what the Bible would call sorcery or divination. This is forbidden by Scripture because. You are making contact with evil spirits. You're making contact with demons. You know, Jess, and the funny thing with with the case that we're talking about, the exorcist of, of Robbie Mineham, and that's not that's not his actual name. But but what we need to realize is that he spent hours and hours doing this, playing this game in his room by himself. And unless we were to examine the actual documents, Jess, of that case to see what he said about it, we could assume that he spent hours in communication with demonic spirits uh, to get to the level that we obviously know now uh, that he reached uh, by, by playing this game. So I think it's it's um, it's very, very uh, a diabolical game that uh, we have to we ha- we, we have to keep talking about it. Just we, we have to uh, get this information out there so people understand the dangers of it because this is one of the main uh, like you said, the main causes of, yep. of uh, diabolical exposure. Yeah, and and uh, once again, the devil and the secular humanists, which I think work together, they're trying to normalize it. They're trying to say, "Come on, guys, get over it. It's not a big deal. You know, it's uh, you know, it just it's just innocuous. It's it's just harmless." No, this is called in 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 the Bible is called the sin of sorcery or the sin of divination. And there are so many Bible verses, Leviticus 19, 26. Here's one of dozens. You shall not eat anything with the blood, nor practice divination or sorcery. Deuteronomy 18, 10. There shall not be among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire. One who uses divination, there it is, the Ouija board. One who practices witchcraft 
or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer. There it is, a reference to the Ouija board as well. This is also called in the catechism, the sin of superstition. And why does this offend God? People use the Ouija board because they want to have get answers to their questions in life. Well, here's why this is, is so offensive to God. Because as Catholic Christians, we live by divine providence. Just like our St. Faustina says, Jesus, I trust in you. We don't know what the future holds, but we know that Jesus Christ holds our future. And so we trust in him. And as the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, we live by faith and not by sight. The Ouija board are people trying to know the future, trying to know uh, esoteric knowledge, trying to know things that only God should know or only or that or they shouldn't know at this moment. And so this is the lack of trust and this is the sin of superstition, Eddie. Yeah, Justin, you know, this is so popular right now. You know, it's not just it's not just a board game. It's not just a spiritist game. People are ignoring the warnings that come along uh, with knowing about the uh, about the Ouija board. And they're they're doing it precisely for the reasons that you're talking about, Just. They're trying to get a step up on everybody else on 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 what to do, how to go about it. Uh, uh, you know, just information that that look information is what what messed up the Garden of Eden, if I recall properly. Right. They wanted information. Yeah, the curiosity. Like Father Gabriel, uh, Father uh, uh, Chad Ripperger says that what got Eve in trouble at the Garden of Eden was the sin of curiosity. Yep. She started, wow, a talking serpent? Man, oh, I, well, that's exactly what gets a lot of people in trouble today with the Ouija board the curiosity. Wow, this thing is talking back to me. It's communicating with me. That's the sin of Eve. Wow, this serpent is talking? Wow, what else does he have to say? Yes, I wish there was a talking serpent that came along with this game because people would run from it. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back with the more of Jesus 911. This is Terry Barber inviting you, all the men, to a men's conference June 15th at the Sacred Heart Chapel. This is going to be a day where we're going to talk about true masculinity. You know, there's a problem in the Catholic Church today. We have very few men who love the Catholic faith. And I know a lot of the wives that I'm listening to right now are saying, I want my husband to be on fire for the faith. Send him to the men's conference. Your son, send him to the men's conference by going to virginmostpowerfulradio.org or call 877-526-2151. That's June 15th. When your husband comes back from this conference or your son, they're going to have a different view about their Catholic faith because they're going to meet three men who love Jesus and his bride, the church, and are going to instill in them a love for Christ and his church, the Eucharist, Our Lady. Bring them to virginmostpowerfulradio.org. Sign up there or call 877-526-2151. Full sheen ahead. It is only because of your continued prayers and generous donations that Virgin Most Powerful Radio can broadcast live each weekday. We count on your spiritual and financial support because you understand the urgent need for Catholic programming that shares the gospel with clarity and charity, but without compromise. Please prayerfully consider becoming a monthly donor. You can set it up with the touch of a button on our website, catholicrc.org. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow! That's 80%! Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151.
Welcome back to Jesus 911. It's Eddie Chavez and uh, Jesse Romero in a uh, two-man car today. We are on Soul Patrol, John 316 on our call letters. We are talking about the Ouija board. Very uh, uh, well-known amongst uh, Jesus 911 listeners. Uh, but just this is we're talking about this. It's it's a direct violation of Deuteronomy 726, where it's abominable. It's an abominable offense uh, to bring anything uh, unholy into the home. And this is what we're talking about today. That's exactly it. It's as Catholics, I'll just make it very simple. This is not brain surgery. It's uh, the Ouija board is considered the sin of divination or the sin of sorcery. As Catholics, we're to trust in God and God alone. And what the Ouija board does, it, this is a form of divination using a planchette, a board that responds to you. It talks back to you by this uh, this uh, this device that that uh, this pointer that moves when you ask it questions. That's exactly what Eve did in the Garden of Eden. She was asking a serpent questions, and she was fascinated by uh, by this uh, serpent that was able to talk back. And a lot of people become fascinated by this planchette, by this board game that's able to answer your questions. And yeah, your questions are being answered. That's true. But guess what? It's being answered by an evil spirit. And, and again, there is not one exorcist in the Catholic Church, not one, that does not say that the Ouija board is dangerous and that it's a portal to demonic possession. And once again, we go back to the very famous case, the one of, uh, you know, uh, Robbie M Mannheim. That's not exactly his real name, but that's the one that they use whenever you look him up, the 1973 movie. And, uh, <clears throat> and so as Catholics, Eddie, uh, also it's called the sin of superstition. This is condemned in the catechism. 2115, 2116, 2117, 2118. And as Catholics, uh, I hope this teacher uh, is able to change the policy in this school, Eddie, because I would be livid if my five year, if I found out that my five year old was being taught the Ouija board in a public school. Man, boy, oh boy, you'd have to unpeel me off the roof. Yeah, Jess, you know what? This, this, is, this is becoming a trend. I mean, we're seeing a lot of these anti-catholic things happening throughout the country and i think that at some point we're just going to have to call a spade a spade just and say hey listen this is no longer a, a legitimate mistakes these are you know we're we're in, we're in the catholic united states do you find somebody that has never heard of ash wednesday even if they're not catholic and at, at this time you know uh, we're gonna have to just say hey this is what it is and and get rid of some of these people because they are the ones that are that are 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 really violating the church and state statute just they're the ones bringing uh something into it which uh which should, should not be done but uh you know another a verse i think that's important to look at just is, is is deuteronomy 18 Absolutely. which talks about what happens with the people that repent of their evil doings uh and and if you can read uh, deuteronomy 18 but essentially it talks about they took all the diabolical tools that they were using to do sorcery and 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 witchcraft etc and they burned them just they burned them and so i think that's what our suggestion would be with anybody that has a, a ouija board is to uh, is to burn it there's no reason to, to to speak with demons there's no reason to to try to ascertain knowledge that doesn't uh, apply to you yeah that's the way to get rid of a ouija board exorcist will tell you to burn it yeah. And then and uh, and and collect all the ashes and you know put them in a don't throw them to the four winds you know yeah make sure all the ashes are together and throw them away in a dump throw some holy water on on the, yeah and throw uh, some holy the, water yes, as well that, that's absolutely. what they'll tell you to do as well throw some holy water uh, Eddie another verse uh, that condemns this action is in Second Kings chapter seventeen verse seventeen it says then they made their sons and their daughters pass through the fire by the way fire walking was the practice that the pagans used back in the Old Testament. Uh, the, uh, in terms of uh, that's how they would give honor to the gods or the false deities. They would make their kids walk through fire, through hot charcoal. It says, and practice divination and enchantments and sold themselves to, the, to do evil in the sight of the Lord provoking him. There you go. Divination is condemned once again very clearly. And so as Catholics, uh, I mean, there's, there's nothing here that's, uh, that, that's complicated to understand. So what does the term Ouija mean? Ouija. It's a French word, we, oui, and ja is the German word. We oui means yes in French, and ja means yes in German. So it's a French-German compound where you're saying yes, yes. Who are you saying yes, yes to? <laughs> the devil. The talking serpent. That's who you're saying yes, yeah. yes to. 
And and here's the last thing before we go to the caller. We got the caller. I just want to mention how is it that 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 you're able to talk to demons using this board? Here's the way demonologists explain it. There's a thin veil between this world and the next world. A thin veil, okay? And the Ouija board and occult practices such as this, what it does, it, it punches a hole between the veil between this world and the next world. And we call, call that door that's punched or that holds that's punched, exorcists or demonologists call them portals, portals. Those are openings that we make between this world and the veil that separates us from the next world. And these portals now allow these evil spirits to be conjured into our world. That's the way demonologists would explain it. We got John Con from, I think he's gone from Kentucky. Kentucky. Hello, John. John, you're on. Go. Hey, guys. I wanted to relate this story. My older brother, he's like three years older than I am. I think he was in his early teens, probably. He came home and announced that he had used a Ouija board. And when he told me he had used it, there was like fire in his eyes. And he told me that that piece moves. And um, it kind of freaked me out. I'll never forget it. I knew right where I'm, I could go back to right where I was standing. But in my personal opinion, he has never been the same. Right now, he might claim still to be Catholic, but he's a pagan, doesn't believe in God. He's always angry when I bring up anything about Jesus and the church. So I don't know. It was just like a personal story. Maybe your listeners might help your listeners understand. Yeah, yeah. It's a, John, it's, without it's a doubt, very, some, very, very dangerous. Yeah, some people become what's called demonized. It's not necessarily possession, but what they do is they have, they've invited a demon just to basically, you know, torment them and aggravate them. And uh, they've invited a demon into their life as a result of these games. Sometimes it won't lead to full possession, where the demon enters the body and inhabits the body. But nonetheless, these games even incur a minor form of harassment called demonization, where the person's tormented, they're aggravated, they're constantly being tempted, their, their, their mind is being attacked all the time with f- foul images and profanity and vulgarity and, uh, and doubt and lack of faith. And so, uh, yeah, the only way to break this is to go back to the Catholic Church, go back, make a general confession, and radically live in a state of grace. That's what I tell people. I was talking to a, a woman last night who's had had the same issues like we're talking about today, involved with, with Satanism, witchcraft, demonization. And I said, and, and, and I looked at her eyes as she was telling me this. I looked at her eyes. They were wild. I said, uh-oh, uh-oh, not good. It was late at night. I was uh-huh. tired. There was a, a few ladies that I was with. I said, oh, if she, if she manifests, I need some guys here because she was a big portly woman, if you know what I mean. She was a big woman. Uh-huh. And, so, and, uh, and so I just started walking her through some of the things that she had to do. And she says, yeah, I invited a demon into my life many years ago. So you know, just, I just and, walked. And have John, you been a confession? Well, not re- I said, you got to do a general confession. You got to break this. I said, are you doing a holy hour? Have you, are you dedicating a holy hour to Jesus? Do you pray the rosary every day? No, no, no. And so, yeah, yeah that's why we're doing this show, Eddie. Yeah, that's right. And you know, John, I think that it's a good idea for the story that we're talking about, the article that we're reading, for some of these parents that take their faith seriously, I think they should uh, take these kids for for a confession or, or talk to a priest because uh, they don't want the, this door, the spiritual door that just uh, just explained, to be open to their children from here on in. I think it's good. It's a time to get in there to close any potential doors that have been open. And and you have one that's already potentially open. This this one little boy that says, uh, uh, or the, the the mom talks about the little boy that says, uh, uh, you know, he can't sleep at night. He's having nightmares. That, those are two signs that I would say that, that's enough. Let's 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 get this out. And as a matter of fact, if I was the principal of that class of that school, I would bring in, uh, you know, priests or religious leaders so that their kids can talk with them to to undo what had been done by this ca- uh, kindergarten teacher. Right. It's just awful. It's just awful. Yeah, it is terrible. Well, thank you, John. I appreciate that story. That's uh, that's a great story. And, and you know, I, we all know someone who has experimented with the Ouija board. And and I have a friend uh, that I worked with. Uh, on CHP that that uh, had the same thing. He's got an older brother, uh, but I think it's worse. I think there's some mental uh, a mental disorder that came along with it that he says has never uh, has never been resolved. So it, it it's I think it's more common than we think. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, thanks for the call. 
Eddie, I think all of us have no people that ha- that uh, that have played the Ouija board and are right now suffering re- repercussions of having done so. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and 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 once again, it's just this is not just a game from Parker Brothers. Okay, the devil's very slick. He's a slick marketer, and he uses something as mainstream as Parker Brothers to pass something into society that's going to cause demonization and possession. And again, the Ouija board is a gateway to possession. I'll say it again. The Ouija board is a gateway to possession. That's not just me saying it. I can quote to you 10 exorcists off the top of my head and demonologists that would affirm exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, and you know, Jess, this is what we talk about when we say stay out of mortal sin. Stay out of the state of mortal sin. Stay away from the Ouija board. These are things that are inherently bad for you. If you have not heard it once before from some someplace, remember that, that it is bad for you. And even though you don't intend it or you might not fully, you know, it's grave matter, uh, you know, full consent, uh, knowledge of you 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 you're gonna get you're gonna get a a a demon that's gonna cross that's gonna punch through that portal if you open it without mortal sin. That's why it's so so dangerous here. But uh, yeah, just we we've got a good uh, topic, a second article that we want to talk about here. Yeah, um, it's called uh, "What Happened When Atheists Attended a Talk on Exorcism." Now this is yeah. This Eddie, is, here's you know one last thing is. I want to say yes. before we wrap up on 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 the Ouija board. Just one thing I just want to add. We, yes. we forgot to mention it the last time that we were talking. Uh, how was r- the name? R- I know it's a fictitious name. The the kid that was possessed uh, that they made the movie The Exorcist about Robbie Mannheim. Right. We'll just use that name. How was he set free? You know what happened is Saint Michael appeared at the last exorcism that they were doing, and and Saint Michael, uh, he said the word, and and he and he had Robbie also say the word, Dominus. Dominus, which means Lord in Latin. This was the this was the last exorcism that they were doing. I think Robbie was in a psych hospital. Saint Michael appears. Saint Michael says the word Dominus, and I think Robbie repeated it as well, Eddie. Yeah. And as soon as he said that, yeah, I'm reading here. Yeah, Ro- uh, uh, Robbie said the word Dominus as well, and uh, the demons left his body, and he was freed completely. He's never been possessed again. He's like in his 80s right now. He lives over in the East Coast. He's a Catholic man with a family. And uh, the demons left when he said the word Dominus in Latin. And St. Michael also said the word Dominus. And he appeared in his his room. You know, Jess, that's a beautiful story. We didn't mention that last time. You're right. So thank you for bringing that up. Dominus, Dominus, Dominus. (laughs) We will be right back with more of Jesus 911. Dominus Bobiscum. The Lord be with you. That's right. Okay. (laughs) We'll be This is Terry Barber inviting you, all the men, to a men's conference June 15th at the Sacred Heart Chapel. This is going to be a day where we're going to talk about true masculinity. You know, there's a problem in the Catholic Church today. We have very few men who love the Catholic faith. And I know a lot of the wives that I'm listening to right now are saying, I want my husband to be on fire for the faith. Send him to the men's conference. Your son, send him to the men's conference by going to virginmostpowerfulradio.org or call 877-526-2151. That's June 15th. When your husband comes back from this conference or your son, they're going to have a different view about their Catholic faith because they're going to meet three men who love Jesus and his bride, the church, and are going to instill in them a love for Christ and his church, the Eucharist, Our Lady. Bring them to virginmostpowerfulradio.org. Sign up there or call 877-526-2151. Full sheen ahead. It is only because of your continued prayers and generous donations that Virgin Most Powerful Radio can broadcast live each weekday. We count on your spiritual and financial support because you understand the urgent need for Catholic programming that shares the gospel with clarity and charity, but without compromise. Please prayerfully consider becoming a monthly donor. 
you can set it up with the touch of a button on our website, catholicrc.org. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow! That's 80%! Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Welcome back to Jesus 911, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to jump to our next topic, Jess, uh, our next article, article that we're going to cover. Uh, and it's, it's entitled, What Happened When Atheists Attended a Talk on Exorcism? This is, this is something that I know you know the... Uh, the author of this uh, uh, this article. So, uh, what, what's Nash going on a, here? He's a good man. He's a Catholic apologist, one of the best in the country. He used to work for Doctor Hahn for many years. He was a researcher and a theologian at the Saint Paul uh, at this uh, yeah at Scott's Institute called the Saint Paul uh, School of Biblical Studies. He's also been a professor at Steubenville. Very sharp apologist. He's always on Catholic answers. Well, apparently, apparently he went to Minnesota State University. And uh, he gave a talk on exorcism at, I guess, at the St. Thomas More Catholic Newman Center. Uh, and there was a group of kids, of, of students, that also went to go listen to him. At, they're, they're from the university. They're called the SSA, not Same Sex Attraction. It stands for Secular Student Alliance. So these are atheist kids, atheist students, and they're part of the university. That They've got their own club there. And uh, let me just share, share with you some things here, then we'll make some comment. It says that this college, uh, you know, at, at MSU, Mankato, he says, a good sign of this is the respectful interaction between Catholic students and the members of the Secular Student Alliance. They're atheists. They're atheists and agnostics. Okay. It says, this serves as an, an inspiring example of how older adults can and should interact when discussing their differences. And the students periodically attend each other's events. And a number of the SSA members, Secular Student Alliance, listened to his presentation on exorcism. And afterward, they spoke to Tom Nash for about an hour debating the evidence for the demonic. So here's some of the things that were discussed. He stood after with these seculars, the atheists and, and uh, agnostics because he gave a presentation. He showed p clips of the movie The Exorcist. And he showed clips of the movie The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Now, one of the criticism that these secular kids made, they said, well, how come you didn't show us actual footage? All you did was show us two movies representative of an exorcism. How come you didn't show us actual footage? So that's one of the things that they criticized him on. And, uh, and, and, and another thing, it says... Uh, uh, Tom responded to them, I reaffirmed to them that both movies are based on real life cases and that my clips demonstrate the Catholic Church, number one, rules out medical causes before administering the rite of exorcism. That's why he showed the clips. And two, seeks evidence that points to demonic involvement, including fluency in unstudied languages, clairvoyance, and sustained preternatural strength. So as Tom is using these movies as a catechetical tool. But the criticism from these secular ag agnostics and atheists, they're saying, we want to see actual footage. We don't want to see what Hollywood's rendition of an exorcism is. Yeah, Jess, you know, uh, it's funny because, well, one of the, first of all, we should say one of the telltale signs, uh, which he didn't, he failed to mention uh, here, was that uh, there's also an aversion to sacred objects, which is which is very uh, critical in, in, in evaluating somebody for possession. If they're, if they're uh, going to have some violent uh, a reaction to a rosary or to a holy object that's placed in front of them, this is also a telltale sign. But what we should say is that, uh, you know, in the in the context of their conversation, it's good to run through the methods uh, that the church submits exorcism candidates uh, through uh, for exorcism, right? But it, it is is this noteworthy that in 2019 uh, to observe 
the church take all these modern precautions instead of acting on what Jesus may have done immediately. That's, you know, so I understand the context of their conversation, but uh, there's also something to be said about, uh, about the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the determining of somebody's mental capacity, uh, uh, you know, before the right. So it, it's 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 a, it's here and there. It's six of one, half a dozen of the other. I'll, I'll tell you, in my opinion, I mean, these kids were respectful according to the article, but I'll tell you why it is that these kids have a hard time believing in in demonic possession and exorcism, because once again, they don't believe in the supernatural. I mean, they call themselves Secular Society Alliance, or what? What do they call it? Secular what? Uh, secular. What is it? The SS, yeah, uh, it's right here. It's uh, the Secular Secular Student, Student Alliance. Secular okay, yeah. Student Alliance. Yeah. So why is it that they don't believe in demonic possession and and the preternatural? Because th- they've fallen into like a lot of our college kids, they've fallen into the error of scientism. Scientism. What is scientism? It's a philosophical error which teaches kids in college that the only way you can know anything is through the scientific method. So immediately these kids, these secular kids that have been have bought into the philosophical error of scientism, they're going to disregard immediately anything supernatural or preternatural. Because again, they've been trained to say, if you can't see it, or if it can be, uh, if it can Proven. be replicated through the scientific method, it's uh, it's not true. So that's 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 just a philosophical error that they've bought into. A lot of them probably through no fault of their own, and that's why, and that's why as Catholics, again, I mean the Catholic Church invented science, so we don't run away from science. And as Catholics, we would say that there's no conflict between science and religion. As these kids, they may believe that there is. Right. Because as Catholics, quoting St. Thomas of Aquinas, we would say that all truth comes from God. So scientific truth comes from God, and religious truth comes from God. It's the same source, God. But a lot of these colleges, and they teach these kids, they, they, they teach them, again, the, her- the philosophical error of scientism, that everything has to be put into a test tube, and they also promote this anti-supernatural bias in a lot of the lectures and, uh, and once again i wish i wish these uh these uh, philosophy and science teachers in college would actually study where science came from it came from the catholic church <laughs> here's what john paul ii says saint john paul ii says about science and 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 its importance uh, in college life john paul ii says science can purify religion from error and superstition, but religion can purify science from idolatry and false absolutes. <laughs> John Paul II says, science and religion draw from one another into a wider world, a world in which both exist. Yeah, I think mean, he answers it there, Eddie. Yeah, I, that's perfect. That's a perfect example. I love I, I love JP too when he when he does those things. Jess, one of the things I'm thinking about too, the, you have to think of the mindset of some of these these teenagers that are that are thinking about scientism. That are, you know, if you can't prove it or replicate it in, in a in a lab, it's it's not true. This is the reality. These are the kids that go and see these movies. These are kids that go there and and are 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 watching. Things like Sabrina the Teenage Witch and and all these things that they can't duplicate either, but they believe it. So so we have to understand that you know we we have this this uh, uh, you know in San Diego there's this this huge conference every year called Comic Con. Well, you got teenagers dressing up as as Transformers and all these other characters in the movies and the reality is just is they believe that you know they, they, they want to be part of that uh science uh, thing but but they don't want to be uh the the supernatural because why because it demands moral uh, uh it demands moral uh, you know that's what the issue is they don't want to change their lives they want to remain they the same it. exactly that's what it is yeah the, so yeah we're talking about tom nash he's a friend of mine he went to go give a lecture on exorcism hey I, you know i uh i admire him i think that took a lot of courage to go to a secular college and given a, a talk on exorcism, uh, he went to the Catholic Newman Club, which is good. The article also says here that the SSA members, which stands for Secular Student Alliance, it says they countered that the quasi, quasi-ubiquity 
of smartphones should make recording such uh, uh, recording such alleged phenomena that's that's uh, exorcisms right. or possessions convenient in modern times and yet there's a noted lack of evidence for scientific examination so uh so the the kids are telling Tom Nash are saying wait a minute with the invention of cell phones and all this other stuff that we can record why don't we have more of these recorded if this is true right and uh and the article says uh I think Tom Nash responds, uh, I said that the filmmaker Steven Spielberg, who wrote and directed Close Encounters of the Third Kind in 1977, has made a similar argument regarding the paucity of evidence for extraterrestrial beings over the last four decades. In contrast to information gathering for alleged UFOs, however, Catholic Church officials rarely video recorded or record exorcisms. Why? Out of respect for the persons treated. Right. Now, Eddie, I think we'll see more and more of recordings as time goes on. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we've just invented the cell phone and other devices and stuff. But, in fact, Father Gabriel Amorth, he allowed one to be recorded. It's on Netflix. It's called The Devil and Father Gabriel Amorth. And uh, the, he should have showed, I think Tom Nash should have showed that one to the kids. Because he has a lot of psychologists and psychiatrists in that movie that talk about the fact that, yeah, this is something that we can't get a handle of. There's no medical explanation for what's happening to these people because they're rational. They have all their marbles. But some of these manifestations, they defy a scientific explanation. I think that would have been a better movie to show this college kids, the devil and Father Gabriel Amorth, rather than uh, the two Hollywood uh, movies that are depictions of exorcisms. Yeah, just and you know th we have to make a distinction because this is very important. Uh, they can show stuff that we already have, you know, like Father Morse, uh, uh, one exorcism in that movie. But we could also remember that the Hollywood movies is going to show the 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 uh, blockbuster stuff, the things blowing up, the things going. You know, they're more dramatic there. And in an actual exorcism, there are points where you might see something that's that's uh, you know dramatic. However, uh, there is a distinction. So so you might have hours of footage uh, by Father Morth that you're not going to see things. Uh, uh, you know, people climbing up walls and stuff like that that uh, you will see in a movie. So I think. I think the, the the progress that we're taking with that, with the uh, modern day cell phones and the recordings of exorcism, I think it's a good thing to go slowly because people have to realize that the demons don't always show their face initially. It always it comes a progression. Like Robbie Mineham, the devil said, I'm not coming out until he says a word. And we know that it was Dominus that he had to say in order for him to be freed. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back on Jesus 911. Stay tuned for these messages. And we'll be right back. Thank you. This is Terry Barber inviting you, all the men, to a men's conference June 15th at the Sacred Heart Chapel. This is going to be a day where we're going to talk about true masculinity. You know, there's a problem in the Catholic Church today. We have very few men who love the Catholic faith. And I know a lot of the wives that I'm listening to right now are saying, I want my husband to be on fire for the faith. Send him to the men's conference. Your son, send him to the men's conference by going to virginmostpowerfulradio.org or call 877-526-2151. That's June 15th. When your husband comes back from this conference or your son, they're going to have a different view about their Catholic faith because they're going to meet three men who love Jesus and his bride, the church, and are going to instill in them a love for Christ and his church, the Eucharist, Our Lady. Bring them to virginmostpowerfulradio.org. Sign up there or call 877-526-2151. Full sheen ahead. It is only because of your continued prayers and generous donations that Virgin Most Powerful Radio can broadcast live each weekday. We count on your spiritual and financial support because you understand the urgent need for Catholic programming that shares the gospel with clarity and charity, but without compromise. Please. 
prayerfully consider becoming a monthly donor. You can set it up with the touch of a button on our website, catholicrc.org. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow! That's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Welcome back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Jesus 911, our final segment on this Wednesday. Uh, we just got done discussing why the Catholic Church does not record more of its exorcisms. And, and, and it's it's intentional. It's it's not a, a, a happenstance. It's an intentional uh, method by which the church protects the uh, the people going through this from repercussions or mockery that might come up later, Jess. Eddie, and because they're, they're, it's also embarrassing. Sure, of It's embarrassing what they go to. That's all I can tell you. I don't want to get into any detail. Right. But trust me, you don't want to be recorded if you're possessed. It's humiliating what demons do to the person. Sure, sure. And uh, that's, that's the last thing you want to remember for the rest of your life. In terms of evidence... For this area, there's a there's a priest, I mean, a, a doctor, Dr. Richard Gallagher. He's an Ivy League trained board certified psychiatrist, serves on the f- faculty of Columbia University. So he has all those Ivy League uh, credentials. I'm glad Tom Nash brought him. He brought him into his presentation because this is a believing psychiatrist. In other words, Dr. Gallagher, he helps out with a lot of the exorcisms and or exorcists out in the East Coast and in the Midwest. And they call him in to uh, take a look at the patients and stuff. And he's one of those psychiatrists that's not afraid to say, guess what? There's no human explanation for what's happening. This is obviously other than natural or other than chemical. Okay, This is this is something preternatural. And so he gives the, a lot of the exorcists the green light. They use them very often. And, uh, you know, Dr. Gallagher, he was also... Very, uh, he was involved in, in the one case that happened a couple of years ago in Gary, Indiana, where there was actual levitation. The possessed person levitated in front of the police. The police came to the house and the person started floating in the air and walking on the wall, uh, vertically on the wall. And the police saw this. And so, uh, there is a, there, so in, in terms of if people are wondering, well, is there any psychiatrist out there that would verify what Tom Nash is saying? Absolutely. Just look at the internet. And look at all the articles written by uh, by Dr. Richard Gallagher. And uh, there's also Scott Peck. He's also another psychiatrist. He's written, a whole, he's written books on this, uh, on, 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 on exorcism and possession from a psychiatrist's point of view. So they are out there, Eddie. It isn't, it isn't like it's just something that the church teaches. You are finding Ivy League medical psychiatrists that are saying, these Catholics are onto something. There's something way beyond what we're able to explain with the natural laws of science. Yeah, just and you know, the funny thing is, I, 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 you know, I read this uh, part of the article. It talks about this little boy that that was holding his grandma's hand and and walking backwards up the wall and back and forth uh, in, in 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 the presence of the uh, of the SSA or, or the workers of the uh, Department of Child Services workers, right? And so I'm thinking, you know, uh, when they do their reports, Jess, they do their reports for the court system. So these people are all certified. They're 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 uh, uh, they're they're well respected in in yeah. the legal system. And so what we have to recall is that whenever they fill a report out, uh, it goes to the judge in a family court, and and that's the way it is in California. I assume that's the way it is in in Indiana. Uh, but I think it's important to realize that this is uh, this is something that these people saw. They reported to a doctor within five minutes that they saw it. Um, the police saw it and wrote it in their report. And I got to tell you, Jess, uh, you know, it's funny. If, if I would have wrote on a CHP 216 or an FBI 302, uh, you know, some things that I saw that was, uh, you know, in the church 
uh, happening within the church during one of these uh, uh, sessions, I think uh, we would have, you know, I don't think I would have been a mandatory reporter. It would have been difficult to keep that uh, <laughs> that title. But uh, but it is is it is very important to realize that these people stake their 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 their, li- their livelihood on they, their their bread and butter comes from from uh, completing these reports. Um, Okay. I, here's here's my take why these young kids don't believe in demonic possession and an exorcism. Here's my take. Again, they admit that they're se- the Secular Student Alliance. They admit that they're atheists and agnostics, agnostics. So they already come with a predisposition not to believe. They're already predisposed just by the organization they're involved in. They're already predisposed not to believe. And, and Archbishop Fulton Sheen, Venerable Fulton Sheen says that there's three reasons why people become atheists. He says, number one, you got the gastric atheist. Ga- an a-, a gastric atheist is the person who lives for bodily and carnal pleasures. And so their flesh extinguishes their spirit and their life is so dark in sin that no light ever comes through the window of their soul. So that's the, fr- some of these guys may be so steeped in mortal sin of the sins of the flesh that they're, they're just blinded to this area of reality. Number two, Fulton Sheen says, you got the heart atheists, the heart atheists. Those are atheists that do not wish there to be a God because these heart atheists are not looking for God because they don't want to change their life. It's an unpleasant reality to accept that there's a God because they don't want to change their sinful life. And so these are called heart atheists. They're like, I don't believe in any of this stuff because if I do, then I'm conceding that there's a God. And if there's a God, I got to change my life. Right. Then you got the, and you, that's what you actually said a while back ago. Then the third reason why these people are atheists and non believers, <clears throat> Fulton Sheen calls them the, the Antichrist atheists. In other words, some of them just hate God. They believe in hate. They don't so much deny that there's a God, they simply dismiss him. And there's a lot of hate in their heart. And that hatred blinds them from seeing some of these things. Yeah. We got a couple of callers, Jess. Uh, All right. At least hey. one. Let's take the first one if we can. I think the first one's uh, Ricky in San Diego. Ricky, are you there? Morning. Morning for duty, sir. Hey, good morning, right. Ricky. How are you? Good job. Hey, good morning, fellas. Uh, 10 8, you know, always on duty. Right. That's right. I had, a, I had a quick question. Yeah. What's well, more of a concern for me? So okay. I've been separated for about eight years, co parenting with my son. We saw him and his mother. We, spent, we split 50% down the middle. So uh, I have him every other weekend. So. He attends mass. He's practicing Catholic when he's on my side. Good. Now, when he's with his mother, it's a whole different story. Now, here's the concerning part. On her left wrist, she has a tattoo of La Santa Muerte. Mm. So now, my thing is, I'm not sure if she's practicing that or not. I do know that she baptized, recently baptized her other two children from another relationship. So now, my thing is, is my son in some kind of a lingo there or is he okay well you know what you you have you have ultimate authority over your son spiritually you're the father so just make sure that every night uh, there's a verse in the book of sirach that says the father's blessing is very powerful make sure from where you're at even though he's not with you you pray for him every night you you dad you pray for him every night and you send him a blessing as well do that every night without fail and especially when he's with you make sure you bless him in your presence, put your hand on his head and bless him with the sign of the cross. The sign of the cross, okay. many of the church fathers have told us, if there's any evil spirits that are lingering around, Lactantius, uh, St. Ambrose, St. Augustine, say the sign of the cross, well done, will cause evil spirits to flee. Secondly, your wife, um, she she's a uh, tattoos, a demonic tattoo can be, according to exorcists, it can be an opening to diabolical uh, torment, to demonization. It's a portal. Right. It can open a person up to the diabolical. Uh, and there's many articles. I'm looking at one here. Uh, you know, tattoos in, uh, where spirits attach themselves by Jan Rieger. I'm, I'm looking at another article here. The dark side of tattoos, uh, where it talks about, again, the way demons attach themselves through these, through these tattoos. Uh, there's a lot of articles written by Catholics and Protestants on the internet, demonologists and exorcists, that talk about the danger of a, of a demonic tattoo. Now, Father Gabriel Amorth, in his book, he says, 
about Christian tattoos, there's no problem with them. That's what he says, okay? It's in his book, uh, yeah. An Exorcist Tells a Story. He says, if people put Jesus or Mary or a cross, he says, there's no problem with that. So I'm not going to qu- question Father Morth. He's the top of the food chain. But yeah. all of them say that demonic tattoos are a danger and a possible opening for evil spirits to come in. Yeah. Okay. You know what, Ricky? I, I, I would, if I were you, I'd, I'd bless my son. The day before he goes and visits mom, the week or weekend that she has him, I would bless him there. Right. And then, like Jess says, bless him okay. from the home when 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 uh, he's not around you. But uh, but yeah, I I agree with Jess. Most exorcists will tell us that uh, evil uh, the, the, the demonic tattoos like that are, are are an opening. They open the door. And so now now we have to examine your wife, your ex wife. Does she? I mean, I'm not sure what if there's an open door of communication with you. But I mean, she did baptize a couple of kids uh, after that. So I don't know if that's just something that she's doing, uh, you know, just for for in the public eye, or or she really believes that uh, you know uh, uh, she wants to make them. Christian or Catholic, so let's let's hope that's the case. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm hoping for as well. Yeah, but your son is not. You know what? Your son is protected by your prayers. Uh, you keep him going to mass. You keep him involved in everything, and just uh, you know, just uh, reinforce uh, all, all the all the Catholic tenets of the faith, so that we can, uh, you know, so that he can get the full uh, uh, the the full version of Catholicism, not just half of it, like like uh, you know, like like your marriage, like the marriage went. So, yeah, good good uh, good call, Rick. Quick last question. If he attends Mass every other weekend, like when he's with me, he's uh, attending Mass on Sundays. But when he's not with it, does that consider him being in mortal sin? How old is he? He's 11. No, it's, it's because, uh, uh, although the, they, they have the age of reason at the age of 7 or 8, right. but the fact of the matter is they're under, they don't have their own car. They're under their parents' custody. Right. And they're still, they're, they're, their conscience is still being formed. They're still being catechized, so it's mom, mom and dad's responsibility up until they leave the house to make sure they're going to Mass on Sunday, at least to the age of 18. I mean, once you can vote and once you can serve our military, then you you have to make the decision to go to Mass on Sunday on your own. Barring the ability to vote and carry a gun in the military, uh, it's mom and dad's job to take them to Mass until they, they're emancipated, and most people are emancipated at 18 in this country. Right. Okay, Ricky. Hey, listen. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Sure yeah, yeah. De- definitely. Thank you for calling and listening. We got another caller go to here. Uh, Alonzo, Alonzo in Bay Point. Uh, are you there? Behold the cross of the Lord. Be Amen. Gone, all evil powers. The Amen, line, brother. the tribe of Judah, the root of David has conquered. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, good job, dude. Hi. Saint, it's that St. Daniel of Anthony of Pablo's exorcism prayer, a thousand years, a thousand years old. Good job. I know I read it off your book. It's great. Hey, <laughs> hey I just want to say, um, I just quick comment. You know, it's uh, it's about to end. Uh, but uh, this topic is is what got me and triggered uh, like six years ago when when uh, when I heard Terry and Jesse show in the Mechlet Heart Radio. I remember it was like around six years, I some something like that. But it was exactly this topic. I was going to, uh, uh, you know, about witchcraft, about how you know speaking about the devil and what he does and how we got to know the enemy so um i just want to tell all the uh, all the listeners you know uh if you guys, if you guys are listening uh you know um give that monthly donation you know uh, if you're going to peach coffee getting coffee you know every day spending five bucks on that <laughs> hey you know what thanks alonzo come on man Continue thank you brother to, to hey call next today. time alonzo we want to hear from you yeah call, call back again man yeah. finish that story <laughs> ladies and gentlemen don't forget to see unplanned this week's coming out uh, we're also going to stand by for Gary Machuda on Hands On Apologetics. Teddy Chavez and Jesse Romero will talk to you next time. Thank you. 10 7. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests. Oh, my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, grant it love and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to Thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou Thyself maintain them in holiness. O Divine and Great High Priest, may the power of Thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of Thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen.
Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.